Boeing whistleblower John Barnett found dead in the United States. Now, this is a bit of a conspiracy theory that I've been kind of wanting to dive into. Now, do you know what Boeing is, ladies and gentlemen? Boeing, for anybody that doesn't know, is an American multinational corporation that designs, manufactures rockets, satellites, and missiles. Yeah, they're a defense contractor, but <laughs> they also make airplanes, not just for the military, but stuff that you and I fly in. Now, do you fly? Have you ever flown anywhere? Uh, I fly, okay, more than I ever want to. And usually when you book a ticket, you get the idea of what plane you're sitting in. And sometimes it could be Airbus or <laughs> the other flip coin is uh, Boeing. <laughs> so obviously there's not a whole lot of choice that's available. Now, before we walk into this, I want to just call down a bit of the fear mongering. Uh, according to the Bureau of Transportation Statistics, yes, even if you don't like me, you learn something on this channel. The transportation fatalities by mode. See, you see this big blue bar? Yeah, that's highways, okay? Meaning that it is actually way more likely you're going to die in a highway next to this teeny tiny little red bar that is, of course, just airplanes, okay? Air travel. Now, of course, it's also railroad and just mass transit. And I like to think that because highways have some of the most degenerate drivers on there, <laughs> I'm looking at you, 407, uh, then uh, there's a high chance that you'll die in your car than you'll ever die in a plane, okay? But again, that's not necessarily something that's easy for everybody to take because right now, Boeing is going through a very, very serious issue in public eyes right now. There are travelers who are looking to change flights to avoid actually going in Boeing Airlines. In fact, CNN is saying flying is getting scary, but is it still safe? I just showed you actual statistics. You'll be fine. But let's get to the actual meat and potatoes of the situation. Now, according to uh, the actual whistleblower in the situation, who is John Barnett? He is actually somebody that has worked for Boeing for 32 years in their quality control department. And currently, he was actually involved in a whistleblower lawsuit against Boeing for their quality and maintenance issues. Now, what happened during the situation was he was basically supposed to go for a third day of deposition when he actually ended up apparently being found dead via a gunshot wound. So John Barnett, who's actually been a whistleblower since 2019, was actually found dead in March. And this person was a pretty principal key figure in going up against Boeing and talking about their very serious issues. Now, obviously, one of his first discussions in the situation back in 2019 was talking about the Boeing 787 planes where the oxygen masks apparently didn't work. So John Barnett, a former quality control engineer for Boeing, told BBC News that 25% of oxygen systems he tested in 2016 for the company's iconic 787 Dreamliner jets didn't work correctly and Boeing went ahead and installed them on planes anyways. So obviously... Uh, any number, I, I, there's obviously going to be a bit of a issue with like, you know, devices being produced. 25% is in, insanely high, okay? And for Boeing to look at that and say, all right, whatever, one in four oxygen masks probably don't work, install them. Now, if you don't know what an oxygen uh, mask is or the system is, uh, it's basically when the plane has a bit of an issue in the cabin, they drop this mask uh, from above. And you know when they tell you, hey, put your mask on before you put your kids on? It's literally designed to make sure human beings get access to proper oxygen flow into their bodies. Because oxygen's a pretty important thing for human beings. Now, if one in four don't fucking work, that's gonna be a problem. 25% of the cabin is playing fucking Russian roulette with their goddamn lives, okay? And that's a situation that is never okay. Now, obviously that was him basically talking about it, but again, that wasn't his only situation discussing Boeing's manufacturing issues. Now, the actual plane that we're gonna be discussing here is the 737 MAX. Now, obviously, Boeing has also made an update on an actual issue regarding an Alaskan airline flight, which we'll be getting into, and the 737-9. Now, obviously, they are very much keeping everyone updated on this situation. As of March 20th, 2024, when the Boeing financial officer says, there's a lot of change happening at Boeing right now. Dog, I would hope, based on the amount of stuff we're about to look into right now. 
So first off, the 737 MAX has had what I would say a development hell in the plane industry, where basically Boeing discovered that they had improperly drilled holes in the components that help maintain the cabin pressure of the 737 MAX jet. Now, obviously, beyond all of it, the other issues they had were the rudder control systems in December 2023 when they discovered this, where Boeing urged airlines to inspect the aircraft for loose bolts in their rudder control systems. I mean, can you imagine, like, making... First off, you don't make that many planes a year because this is such a specialized market. Planes are expensive to produce. But these are actual, like, you know, vehicles that are designed to be used by highly professional individuals. And you're carrying hundreds of people. You cannot afford to have these serious mistakes. But of course, ladies and gentlemen, beyond all of it, obviously, for anybody in the airline industry to learn something, there has to be some death. So unfortunately, we're looking at Ethiopian Airlines Flight 302, which is unfortunately one flight out of two in this situation where a total of 100% of the actual passengers for this had died. A plane that carried 157 people, which 149 were passengers and eight were the crew, totaling a fatality of 157. No one survived the situation. And what was the airplane? The Boeing 737 MAX. Now, according to this situation, this was basically a scheduled international passenger flight from Addis Ababa to Nairobi. And what they basically found was one minute into the flight, the first officer acting on the captain reported a flight control problem to Central Tower. Two minutes into the flight, the plane's MCAS system actually activated, which is the Maneuvering Characteristics Augmentation System. And unfortunately, it has its role in two fatal accidents. That's the MCAS system. So according to the situation, when two minutes into the flight, when the MCAS system activated, it pitched the plane into a dive towards the ground. Then the MCAS activated again, even if the pilots started to control it, it then dropped the nose even further down. The pilots flipped a pair of switches to disable the electrical trim tab, which also disables that MCAS software. However, by shutting down the electrical trim system, they shut off their ability to trim the stabilizer into a neutral position with the electrical switch located on their yokes. So obviously all of these issues and all of the effort put in by the pilots ultimately led to two entire planes losing 100% of the lives that were onboarded. And obviously there is no fixing that. Unfortunately for any of these companies to face any repercussions, unfortunately innocent people have to die, especially in a fucked up industry like the airline, aerospace and defense industry. So in the quest for making money, unfortunately it seems according to the BBC that Boeing was basically forced to pay $200 million over charges where it misled investors. So they said Boeing puts profits over people in an effort to rehabilitate its image according to the SEC. And what they said was the 737 MAX was grounded for 20 months after two crashes killed 346 people. And of course, a $200 million doesn't really account for much when they've already lost tens of billions of dollars in this actual crash. Again, it seems like for Boeing, I don't really think that their actual like leadership gives a shit about the lives lost. I think they're more worried about the fact that they're just losing a big chunk of money. Unfortunately, that's the worst part of any world of business, right? Obviously, profits over human lives any day, all right? And if you ever find that that's crazy to think about, welcome to the world of big business. Now this is where we're gonna be moving up to a recent actual crash in the situation, and that is the Alaskan Airlines flight 1282. So what's wild about the Alaskan Airlines flight is basically what problem happened over here was the Boeing company, obviously it was a big issue for them, but it was actually a miracle that the passengers in the situation survived. Now to give you an idea, this is what it looked like. So in the middle of the flight, one of these panels ripped completely open. And from what I've understood, an actual child was near here and it's a miracle that they survived. So looking into it, all right, if you read from Le Monde.fr, right, the actual publication, a few moments earlier, there was a loud bang in the plane flying from Portland, Oregon to Ontario, California one of the airports, a plug in the fuselage replacing a possible additional door in row 26 was literally blown out. A child's t-shirt was ripped off. A teddy bear was sucked out. Two cell phones flew out of the plane. Oxygen masks dropped. I hope 100% of them functioned by the way. Uh, and the cockpit door was torn open. Everyone thought their time had come and were messaging their loved ones. 
but thankfully, all 171 passengers and six crew members were strapped into their seats. And, of course, the aircraft landed in Portland at 5.27 p.m. without casualties. And it's because of this shit that I always put the belt on in a plane. I know some people get annoyed by it, but that is a situation where seatbelts quite literally save fucking lives. Now, obviously, at this moment in time, the U.S. government is a little bit angry. But to dial it on back to our friend John Barnett, who unfortunately took his own life, allegedly in this situation, is somebody that we have to kind of be delving into. So this is an individual that was basically keeping the pressure on Boeing alive, and they were bringing up a whole heck of a lot of issues. And this guy's been with the company since 1985. And because of the whistleblowing situation, obviously, he's not working with the company any longer. Obviously, in 2017, he's not even here any longer anyways. Now, this comes from the Hindustan Times, all right? And I don't know how, uh, again, uh, close this is. I assume they probably also picked this up off of another publication anyways. John Barnett, a former Boeing employee, found dead after he had raised concerns about the company's production standards. So what's weird is, as he's testifying against one of the biggest aerospace companies in the world, especially at a time when that company is getting looked at by three U.S. federal agencies, this is kind of shocking. So again, what happened over here was, effectively, John Barnett reportedly shot himself with his handgun and left a note in his truck in a parking lot in Charleston, South Carolina, according to a DailyMail.com report. So what they said was investigating officers at Charleston Police Department probing his death claimed Boeing's ex-quality manager died from a self-inflicted wound. He reportedly extended his stay at Holiday Inn two days prior. John was expected to check out the day before his friend contacted the hotel and raised an alarm. And they found him dead inside the Dodge Ram in his Dodge Ram in a parking lot. So I looked more into the situation, and even a few days later, what had happened was people started looking into lawyers, family, friends, and witnesses all say the 62-year-old was upbeat about finishing off giving testimonies against the former employer in Charleston, South Carolina. So again, people said that he seemed upbeat, he did not seem depressed, and it seems out of character that he would take his own life. Now, honestly, I don't know what goes through somebody's head. I could imagine if this was actually a case of him taking his own life, it probably is due to the fact that there is so much media pressure and so much pressure from a big multi-billion dollar defense contractor that you are basically going up against. Even if you are in the good graces of the federal government and the eyes of the public, it can be a high stress environment and honestly, Whatever goes through somebody's mind is not something I hope to ever live through in my day and age. But it's also interesting to think that even the lawyer involved says that this seems fishy. Now, obviously, this has led to a massive conspiracy brewing up that maybe Boeing was the one responsible for getting him out. Maybe they sent some assassins or something. These are completely unsubstantiated claims, and nobody knows the true answer to anything. In fact, this is still being properly investigated by multiple law enforcement agencies as we speak. So, of course, what happens here is now the government is even more, you know, insanely looking in to Boeing because of what happened with the Alaskan Airlines situation and the fact that this is just an emerging story. People are actually scared to fly planes, to fly in the aircraft industry because one of the only manufacturers, one of the only two big ones, is quite honestly fucking up building their planes or it appears that they're doing that. Now you got the Federal Aviation Administration literally looking into Boeing because they apparently failed somewhere to the point of three dozen audits during an actual examination, which is insane. They failed 33 out of 89 audits during an examination conducted by the FAA after the Alaskan Airlines jet that happened in January. So not a good looking sign. And then of course, because of this situation, because lives are being lost and these people are being literally negligent, criminally negligent, the US DOJ, specifically the Federal Bureau of Investigation, is looking into Boeing criminally, interviewing the entire crew on that Alaskan Airlines flight. That Alaskan Airlines flight may be the death knell of this company, okay? Especially when it comes to the commercial airlining world. But again, they're a big defense contractor, guys. These are people that ultimately will get bailed out at the end of the day. But I hope to see more than just a slap on the wrist. I really want to see some actual people put behind bars because they have actually put people's lives into danger. This is, this is not like a game. Now, if you have been on this plane, the FBI probably has sent you a correspondence that says, I'm contacting you because we have identified you as a possible victim of a crime. 
A victim specialist from the federal agency Seattle office, this is from Associated Press, basically they're saying the case is currently under investigation by the FBI. So again, if you are somebody that was on that plane, one of the passengers, thank God you survived, but now you might be involved in a criminal investigation where the FBI is looking into this company in a very serious fashion. And again, it's all because the amount of fear that has been instilled into people about the airline industry is insane. There's people who are literally considering changing their tickets or completely banning or getting off the flight if they see the name Boeing attached anywhere on their boarding pass, which I can understand, right? Like obviously when you're in the air, when you're in the air, when you're in this big, you know, pressurized tube flying thousands of miles, you want to make sure you get to your destination safely. Now to understand since this uh, entire thing dropped about a day ago, even the CEO actually had to step down because of this actual safety crisis that has gone on. So it's a pretty big thing to see it happen. Again, will this shakeup actually affect this company and make it better? That's to be decided. I also want to shout out my good friend Umpaville, podcast co-host, an amazing guy all around, for making a video on this topic as well too. I highly recommend you guys check it out as well. And obviously, I think the surrounding story regarding the whistleblower for Boeing just taking their own life out of nowhere, out of the sudden, especially during a high-profile investigation, has probably scared people more than they should be. But again, this is a situation where, honestly, it is evolving. And I hope to God there's actual justice being delivered over here. It's truly one of the wildest rabbit holes that I've witnessed. And honestly... I hope it ends in a very positive note. Honestly, what Boeing seems to be doing is building planes without any form of proper quality control, which obviously, look, there are some fields you can get by on quality control, okay? When you're in the video game industry, making a, you're skipping QA might lead to some pissed off gamers, but it's not gonna lead to lives being lost. When you're in the fucking airline business, dog, <laughs> You can't be playing with lives like that. Ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar, and uh, yeah, if you like what you saw, please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like it or dislike it, I am out.